Hi, I'm Garvin. This video is on colic, the vein of a lot of parents' life. So what is colic? Colic is the term used when your otherwise healthy baby cries excessively and cannot be suited. All babies cry, of course, but crying is excessive if it totals three hours a day and happens more than three days a week for at least three weeks. This sort of crying is also called persistent crying or problem crying. So this phase of crying is very common and it will pass. It usually starts between two weeks and four weeks and will probably be over by the time your baby is about four months old. So how can you tell if your baby has colic? So if your baby cries excessively but is otherwise healthy and feeding well, it's likely that the baby has colic. Your baby may be diagnosed with colic if he or she has frequent bouts of intense and inconsolable crying, he pulls their legs up to their tummies and arches their back when crying, and he cries most often in the late afternoon or evening. So should you take your baby to the doctor? Well, it, yes, it's recommended that you seek advice from your GP if your baby cries excessively. So try to keep a note of his bouts of crying and any other symptoms and his feeds. Take this with you when you visit your GP and whenever you see your health visitor or public health nurse. So your baby may have symptoms that indicate something more serious is causing his crime. You should seek immediate advice from your GP if your baby has a high-pitched, abnormal sounding cry, vomits green fluid, has blood in his poo, takes much less fluids than usual or is having fewer wet nappies than usual. So even if your baby shows no obvious signs of illness apart from excessive crying, it's still a good idea to see your doctor. Your GP will advise the best course of action to help you ease with your baby's symptoms. So why does your baby cry so much? We still don't know why some babies cry so much more than others. Experts have suggested that colic may be just at the extreme end of normal crying, which usually peaks in the first two months. So while some babies only cry a little, your baby may just naturally cry a little more in the early weeks of his life. This phase will pass. If you have a colicky baby, you'll be relieved to hear that he should start crying the same amount as other babies of his age as the weeks pass. So colic is just as common in breastfed babies as in formula fed babies. It affects girls and boys equally too. There are various theories about why colic happens. For example, your baby could be persistently crying because his gut is still maturing. So indigestion and wind are temporarily causing a problem. So how can you soothe a colicky baby? The persistent nature of colic means that there are likely to be times when your baby cries, no matter what you do. Be prepared for soothing methods to work well one day, but not the next. If your doctor has ruled out a treatable cause for your baby's crying, you're back to coping with the colic however you can. Although this can be hard, there are plenty of tips to test out. Feeding your baby whenever they seem hungry, rather than trying time to time his feeds. This is called feeding on demand. Allowing yourself time to tune into your baby's signals may help you to recognise his precursory cues. You can then offer a feed or sleep before his crying gets more intense. However, your baby may move straight into full-blown crying without giving any signals. If so, try calmly holding him or giving him skin-to-skin -skin contact before he settles to feed. Burping your baby after every feed, hold him over your shoulder, sit him upright on your lap or place him face down on your lap. Then gently pat or rub his back to bring up wind. Massaging his tummy gently with clockwise movements to help move along trapped wind and poo. Using a dummy, he may be soothed by sucking. Some babies use their fingers or a tongue to suck on instead of a dummy. So if you're anxious, your baby may pick up on this too. If your baby gets very windy, you could try to prevent him from getting indigestion. If you're breastfeeding, try to keep your baby as upright as possible. Make sure he is fully emptying one breast before moving on to the other, especially if he's producing green poos. 
If he's bottle fed, make sure he isn't swallowing air from the bottle. Try to sit him upright and tilt the bottle enough so that the milk covers the entrance to the teat. You could try an anti-conic bottle if necessary. You could try an anti-gas medication with drops containing the ingredient called semetochrome or gripe water or lactose drops. These are available in pharmacies. Some parents have found probiotic drops containing a lactobulus helpful. However, the evidence is mixed about their effectiveness. If you do use anti-gas remedies, try each remedy one at a time so you know what works and what doesn't work for your baby. If you've tried something for a week and not noticed a difference, it's fine to stop using it. Other soothing approaches often recreate feelings and sensations that your baby had while in the womb. Your baby may feel comforted if you hold him close to you so that he can hear your heartbeat. Sit down, relax and take long, slow breaths so that your heartbeat becomes slow and regular. You can swaddle him if he's less than a month old. Quieten things down and dim the lights. Lots of activity or being passed from person to person could overstimulate your baby. He may also find it difficult to stop gazing at bright lights. So play white noise to him. Repetitive noise may recreate the whooshing sounds in the womb. The sound of a vacuum cleaner, a hair dryer, or a ticking clock, or a white noise CD may work. Take him for a drive in the car or a walk in the pram. The vibrations from the road or pavement will soothe some babies. Rock your baby, you recreate the swaying motion he enjoyed in the womb by baby wearing or rocking him in a bouncy chair. Try a warm bath, your baby spent months immersed in warm and naotic fluid. So always following the same pattern of care may also help. Then your baby will become used to what happens next and get more settled in general. You could try offering a feed every time your baby wakes, then spend some time cuddling or playing. Follow this with letting him play on his own, maybe under a baby gym or mobile. Put him down to sleep as soon as you spot signs of tiredness, such as yawning, whining, rubbing his eyes or becoming overactive. However, it's possible that the same routine won't be helpful every time. So there isn't strong evidence that any particular soothing technique or colic treatment makes much difference to the amount your baby cries. By the time most parents have tried everything, their baby has outgrown his colic anyway. So if you feel that nothing is helping and you're getting stressed, put your baby in his cot or Moses basket and take a break for a few minutes. So is colic harmful? No, it's not. Colic won't harm your baby. It may actually be more painful for you and your partner to cope with your baby's consistent crying. The best thing to do is stay as calm as possible and remind yourself that he or she will grow out of this phase. So if you have any other questions, you can contact me through the live pharmacist on the website, email me, or call into Lynch's Pharmacy in Broaddale in Mary Hill and Douglas and Cork. Thank you for watching.